Hello and welcome to this album release show. My name is Barnaby Smith and I'm the artistic director and countertenor in the vocal group Vocher's 8. And we're here today to celebrate the release of Vocher's 8's new album, After Silence. Now, given the title, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this was perhaps a project that was conceived during this period of lockdown. But in fact, it's something we've been working on as a group for about 18 months and it was designed to celebrate our 15th anniversary as an ensemble. For that reason, it looks both backwards at some of our greatest music that we've sung for the last 15 years, but also looks forward as well. And we'll be talking about that as the show goes through. Now, I'm going to be playing you some music from the album and also catching up with all of the members of the ensemble for the next couple of hours. And I've asked each of them the same three questions. Firstly, what is a favourite memory from making this disc? Secondly, which part of the album? The album comes in four chapters or EPs. Which chapter is their favourite? And lastly, if they had to pick a track for me to play for you today, what would that track be and why? So without further ado then, let's hear from our first member. This is Katie. Favourite memory from the recording? Um, I think getting to use one of the big cranes for recording for the first time, that was really exciting. Um, Dave would be experimenting with a new um, filming device and new camera and it was, it was good fun trying to watch him trying to maneuver it around and also us getting in the way of it. I really love the first EP that we did Remembrance there are so many pieces on that that I've got such good memories of and I love singing them with everybody else. What track would I like you to play? Um, I'd love you to play the William Harris Bring Us Oh Lord God it's such a fantastic piece and a piece that we would normally approach with a huge chain require. And doing it with just those eight voices is something that is, I think we found quite exposing, so quite challenging at first, but it's so rewarding to sing. Um, you get so much out of it as a performer. I think as an audience member, you really can pick individual lines out a lot better. <laughs>
after silence, that which comes closest to expressing the inexpressible is music. It's a quote by Aldous Huxley that we have based this album concept around. Is there a finer example of a piece that should have definitely made the playlist than that wonderful piece by William Harris, Bring Us, O Lord God? We were looking for music that managed to elevate the meaning of its text with the score. And as I say, that Harris is just sensational. An achievement for the group as well, because it it's a sort of new direction, I think, in the repertoire for us. Over the last couple of seasons, we've been taking music that might originally have been conceived from a much larger choir and seeing if we could bring it into this single voice consort scenario that we are singing in, in Vocha's 8. What that means, and the, the difficulty of that, is we want to maintain the sort of beauty of, of the blend that you would get in a chamber choir, whilst also gaining from the benefit of singing in single voice, which is probably an ability for the listener to hear some of the finer details of the score. And when we went into the session with the Harris, we weren't entirely certain if we were going to be able to pull it off. It was a kind of suck it and see scenario, if I'm honest. So very, very proud of the outcome. And as I say, it's the, the sort of perfect example, I think, of, of the type of piece that we wanted on the playlist to really bring meaning to that quote by Aldous Huxley. Now, talking of technically demanding and bringing choral music into a single voice consort, the piece that Chris has selected also falls into that same category. So let's hear from him next. Uh, one of my favorite memories of the recording is probably one of the early sessions we did uh, in Trinity College Chapel in Cambridge. I, I sang there for three years uh, in the choir as a choral scholar, uh, so it's a special place for me. But also, where we, it's where we recorded Bring Us, O Lord God by William Harris, which was a marvellous sort of collaboration between us. We'd had some ideas about how we wanted to sing the piece as a group, but then we worked with Adrian, the producer, in quite an active way during the session uh, and came out at the end with something I don't think we thought we would, but we're really, really pleased with the result. I think my favourite disc is probably number three, Redemption. Um, one of the reasons I like it is because it has two fantastic moments uh, of collaboration. Uh, first, in the Mahler, uh, Ich bin der Welt, uh, where we collaborated with Mary Bevan and Nick Deutsch, and also in the Bach Cantata uh, with the Academy of, of Ancient Music. Uh, one of the things we love to do, we always love to do in Botches 8, is to collaborate with other artists, so that was a really special disc. Uh, it will come as no surprise to Barney, but my favourite track uh, on the whole thing is Britain's Hymn to St Cecilia. It's just, uh, I think, a marvellous piece for many reasons, not least it shows off Britain, uh, his best, his best choral writing, in fact, some of his best music uh, whatsoever. And it really, I think, just is a fantastic showpiece for the ensemble. I think we might be the first ensemble to record it one to a part as well, so I think there's a lot of reasons for our recording of it to be really, really special. Thank you. 
Wow, I haven't actually listened to that track back since I, in, certainly not its entirety, since I sent it off to the press having edited it. And that's a good few months ago. And I'm thrilled to say that I'm as pleased with it now as I was back then. Uh, quite an achievement actually to sing that with such few voices, but so much fun. It's quite Madrigalian in style, isn't it? And so I think actually it works in that single voice setting really quite well. Also, one of the things I love about the piece is the way it moves between the, the different different sections of the music. And being able to do that with eight singers unconducted is really quite nice because there's so much music in the moment that's going on. Um, now, I mentioned earlier that this disc has been separated into four chapters. We're calling those four EPs. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to release the disc digitally across the whole 15th anniversary season. So... Today is the disc release, but actually the four EPs have been coming out since last November. So what today's digital, what today's physical release means is that this little product here is now on the market. And because we've termed these as four chapters, we've actually decided to hard bind this book. So it's a beautiful card. And then inside the booklet, you get all of the four chapters and each of them comes uh, with some text and some artwork, which I'm going to talk about later. I'm really actually very proud of it. I think if I hold it up nice and close, it might ruin the focus on the camera. But if I hold it up nice and close, we might get focus. And those that text is actually um, a beautiful gloss emboss. So we have already heard Sleep at the very beginning of the programme by Eric Whitaker, which comes from the fourth EP. Since then, we've heard Katie's Choice, Bring Us a Lord God, from the first EP and Chris's choice also from the fourth EP. So now we're going to hear something from the third EP. And that third EP is called Redemption. And to introduce that for us, here is Andrea. One of my favourite memories from the sessions was when we were recording in Islington in London when we were collaborating with Nick Deutsch and Mary Bevan, uh, singing that gorgeous piece of Mahler. Um, and I just remember there's, there's one particular part in the music where uh, I think the oboe and Mary and I are all singing um, a top F or something around there. And we're all sort of, we all just collaborated in that way of trying to take over that note from each other. And it was just such a joy to, um, to be really thinking about such different textures all coming together in one moment. I'm going to pick Redemption as my favourite EP. Um, mostly because I really love the, the more optimistic um, emotions related to the music, the energy that's uh, on that EP, of the, particularly of the different texts that are used. Um, and I just, yeah, really like sort of bathing in that slightly more optimistic feel of all of that music. I'm going to pick The Road Home by Stephen Paulus as my favourite track. Um, I really just love the text um, of that hymn and I love the way that Paulus has arranged it and constructed it and I think it's just beautifully simple but really heartfelt um, and I really enjoy singing it whenever we're doing it in concert as well so it was really nice to get it on record. <laughs>
glorious music there from Stephen Paulus. I'm not sure Andrea chose it because of her solo, but what a solo it is indeed, her, her peerless best. Now, back to this booklet. And one of the things I particularly love about it is the artwork that comes inside. It's artwork by a lady called Debbie Loftus, who created a series of images called First Kiss. And she did that by, it's called mixed media, but she put some oil paints into Petri dishes and took pictures through a microscope. And we've used those pictures to um, create the artwork. So I'm gonna again, hold some up to the camera. So you'll be able to see when it focuses in, we have a different little piece of artwork and color scheme therefore for each of the four chapters. So let's have um, a couple, here's, a, here's another one. And very beautifully, very beautifully done. And each of the chapters also has an insightful introduction from Paul Williamson. You know, this disc is all about text and so actually having uh, really nicely written notes and that sort of book format makes uh, for a great companion. Now, who have we got next? Let me scroll down my notes. Next on our list, we are going to hear from Blake. One of the most special memories for me in the recording process of After Silence was a track that we did for the third EP, Redemption, um, a track I suggested actually by Mahler, Ich bin der Welt abhanden gekommen. There's a very famous chord arrangement by Cletus Gottwald of that uh, piece in 16 vocal parts. Uh, it's an arrangement I think many of us had sung before actually, but um, I spent many weeks sort of slaving over a rearrangement, a revoicing of that, trying to condense it into eight parts. I then decided to add back in the original soprano melody that Mahler wrote. Um, and, and then Barney had the idea of putting back in the English horn part, which is in the original orchestration. And so we came to this session with a hodgepodge of different sort of things. It's basically a 10 part arrangement. We didn't really know how it was going to work or what to expect. And it ended up really coming together very beautifully. Bautista essentially behaving as the orchestra and then these two contrasting instruments stepping out and having their spotlight, the, uh, the soprano solo, Mary Bevan, and the oboe part, the cor anglais part, played by Nick Deutsch. But in that session, I remember at the very end, we tracked a violin descant part that comes over the top of everything, and Andrea sang that solo. It goes up to a high D. And I sat there in the booth, listening to her knock it out, just time after time again. Every single time was, was absolutely perfect, and I just kept thinking to myself, how lucky am I to be able to sing with a voice like that? It was a really special moment as the piece finally came to fruition, and you could just hear it all kind of taking shape. So my favorite EP on After Silence, I think I'm going to have to go with number two, Devotion. I'm just looking through the tracks right now, and throughout all these pieces, I think you get a really good example of the extremes of different sounds that Bautista can make. There is no pop jazz or swing on this one, unfortunately, but you do go from the very sort of ethereal blended sound of Eric Whitaker's A Boy and a Girl and move into the Monteverdi Sestina, which is one of the parts, uh, very dramatic, very expressive Italian music. Um, I get to sing the, the crossover part in that one. We don't really know if it's a high tenor or a low alto, um, somewhere, somewhere in between, but that is, that's really fun music to sing. And it closes out with a Bach, uh, just chorale, very sort of easy hymnal singing to end the day. What piece from After Silence do I want to hear played? Well, I think I'm going to have to go with A Boy and a Girl. I know this one gets played quite a bit, but I don't think you can actually overplay it. Um, it's one of Eric Whitaker's most famous pieces, maybe his most famous, in fact. And it's one that we've all sung in different choirs, but I've really longed for the moment to be able to sing this one with Vatus 8. I think it's my favorite experience of singing Whitaker um, that I can remember. Um, I do remember stumbling across this one as a kid and just really being enamored with it. Um, not just with the harmony, but also with the, the poetry. And I, th I think there's something very heartbreaking to both of those things, actually. Um, the poetry, of course, you know, going through, going through life with someone else, these two lovers experiencing all the different things, all the different moments in life, then getting to the end of life um, and being buried, exchanging silence for silence under the ground. And the way that Eric sets those chords, I don't think he can do it any better. He picks a, an F major chord on the word silence, uh, F major 9, like that. And I remember listening to that as a high school kid, um, just as I was learning about that sort of harmony and, and thinking it was just the most appropriate way to express that sentiment. Um, and to be able to sing those chords and really fine-tune them and find balance them with Vatus 8 
was was incredibly thrilling, and um, I'm really proud of this track. It's uh, Eric Whitaker's A Boy and a Girl.
amazing music there from Eric Whittaker, a composer, of course, who features twice on the After Silence playlist. We already played his wonderful sleep at the beginning of this program and, and there, a boy and a girl. And thanks to Eric for all the support he's been giving this project. Uh, now, you may have noticed that I'm sitting in what looks like a studio. It is indeed a studio. It's the control room here at the Voches 8 Center. And I'm down here at the moment setting up all of our cameras for our new online festival, which is called Live from London, that starts in just over a week's time. Uh, Blake spoke in his interview about how great it's been collaborating on our album and we have been collaborating again to bring you this festival with some incredible vocal groups. So it's starting on the 1st of August. If you haven't yet heard about it, then here is some more information. We invite you to a global festival featuring some of the shining stars from the world of a cappella live online from Voches 8's Wren Church in London. Filmed in HD from the Voches 8 Centre, Live from London celebrates some of the world's finest vocal groups. The festival will be broadcast live online every Saturday for 10 weeks from the 1st of August to the 3rd of October. A portion of all tickets sold will be put towards funding for grassroots music education and to addressing topics of diversity, equality, inclusion and accessibility in choral music. Ticket prices have been structured to benefit artists and promoters alike and to help them cover their COVID-19 losses. We'd love you to join us for this unique series, live from London. It's going to be quite an undertaking to bring that festival to you, but we cannot wait. So a reminder now to grab your tickets, please. We would hugely value your support. As a festival, we're, of course, supporting the artists who are taking part, but we're also supporting the wider arts community. So please come along and get involved. It's a brilliant opportunity to see, frankly, a lineup of artists that I don't think we could ever get to be part of the same festival under normal circumstances. So a great opportunity. And thank you also to all those groups who've so graciously agreed to collaborate with us in that project. Talking of collaborations, we're now going to hear about another one, which is from the After Silence project. So here is Ewan. Hi there Barney and hi to everyone watching. Happy album launch day. I think my favourite memory of the After Silence sessions is probably the first few days that we spent recording in September time in Cambridge. Certainly for me it was one of my first recording sessions with the group and I was quite nervous. Certainly I was almost very late to Trinity College because I had a, couldn't find the entrance for some reason. I don't know why now. <laughs> but certainly walking into Trinity College Chapel that first time, having been there only maybe once before, and having the whole place empty and set up for us to record an album there is certainly one of those really special moments that you get when you're a part of this group. So that's probably my favourite memory. I think a lot of the tracks that we recorded there appeared on what is my favourite EP of the four, and that's number one, Remembrance. Certainly things like Bring Us O Lord God, The Deer's Cry, those kind of pieces when we're talking about our favourite single tracks from this album, those are certainly high on my list. However, my absolute favourite comes from the third EP, Redemption, and that is the arrangement of Mahler's lead Ich bin der Welt abhanden gekommen, that we performed with Mary Bevan and Nick Deutsch. Now, I think this is a piece that I first discovered when I was, oh, probably about 19, quite a while ago when I was at university. I remember actually performing the solo version of that leader 
in my final recital for my second year of university. And still all these years later, the words and the music still have a great effect on me. I found myself very emotional when we sing this. And certainly I think that the choral arrangement of the song and the way that Blake has adapted it for our eight voices, plus Mary and Nick, really has a really powerful effect. And I really enjoyed recording that all day. Certainly you can get a bit bored of a piece, I think, when you repeat it lots of times, but I didn't find that at all with the Mahler, I think. The emotional impact it had on me was still very strong every time. So I would like you to play Ich bin der Welt abhanden gekommen.
it's of no surprise to me and possibly not to you either having heard that that if you were to ask the members of Voches 8 what one of their favorite sessions was during this recording process i think many of them would cite that session with nick and mary they are incredible musicians fantastic collaborators and just <laughs> honestly nice people as well and i think one of the reasons that that session sticks out for me is because it was a really organic day we you know we didn't actually go to the church that day needing specifically to achieve an, a product you know if we got something great but it was there was very much again experimenting to see what happened and we, we walked in with Blake's adaption for the eight voices, but actually we hadn't fully decided how we were going to fit Mary and Nick in. You know, there were various options that we had. And so that that level of creative freedom was was really, really nice. And I'm absolutely thrilled with, with how it's come out. Um, talking of creative free reign, of course, that was an arrangement, but we also have created some new music certainly being the instigators of the creation of new music by bringing two commissions into this project one by Morton Janssen his wonderful Elemental Elegy of course taking the title of the fourth EP and the other by our former composer in residence and fantastic collaborator across the years Jonathan Dove who wrote a piece to mark the end of his tenure as our composer in residence which has formed part of this project and that, that's called Virtue and we're going to hear a little bit more about that in a minute. I'm well known for being emotional on stage and actually the last time I did get emotional was at the premiere of Jonathan's work. There was that sort of feeling, you're obviously singing a new piece of music in in front of a great living composer and Jonathan is a great living composer. But there's also, I really felt when we were singing it like we were creating history. It, it strikes me as one of those pieces that's going to be in the core repertoire, you know, not just from Voch State, but from many choirs for a very long time. And so to be able to put it on disc as well has been really special. But let's, let's hear a little bit more about that from Johnny. My favourite memory from the After Silence sessions was probably in St George's Church in Chesterton when we were recording a hymn to St Cecilia by Benjamin Britten. And those of you that know the piece will, and have sung the piece will know just how long and hard it is, but how magical as well. And we got to the end of the first run through of the piece. And as we got through to the, the very quiet low chords at the end, um, everything just, the chords stopped and then everything just completely fell silent and shimmered. Even the birds stopped tweeting outside. It was a really good take and that certainly felt like something special for me. My favorite EP of the four would have to be the first one, Remembrance. Uh, partly because it contains my very favourite piece in the whole world, Ne Iriscaris Domine by William Byrd, uh, but also just because all of the pieces on that, uh, on that EP uh, contain so much uh, thought and solemnity uh, and also uh, passion as well. I think my favourite piece from Art of Silence would have to be uh, the commission for, from Jonathan Dove, who was our composer in residence last season. It's called Virtue, and it's on this gorgeous text by George Herbert, and Jonathan sets it really well. At the very beginning of the piece, we start at really low, uh, uh, very low chords, um, sweet day, so cool, so calm, so bright, but the text is really about the fact that everything in the world must die. And as we work through these first three verses, the music gradually gets more uh, higher and higher and louder and louder until eventually we burst into this great big G major chord with only the sweet and virtuous soul like seasoned timber never gives. It's an amazing uh, moment in the piece and it really shows that everything uh, eventually that has virtue will survive. <laughs>
one of the great privileges of singing works by living composers is the fact that you can actually work with the composer themselves on the score. And we were hugely grateful to all of the time Jonathan Dove invested in our ensemble during his two years as composer in residence. We had many opportunities not just to work with Jonathan on his music, but actually also to perform with him. And I'm delighted that we're going to be back on stage with him in a few months time, playing once again his amazing song cycle, The Passing of the Year. And we thank him very much for all the work he did with us on that new score, Virtue. Uh, Morten Janssen, the Swedish composer, came all, actually all the way over from Sweden for the recording sessions of his Elemental Elegy. And we spent a few hours in the room with him talking about the piece. It actually changed quite a lot of our um, of our artistic decisions and markings as a consequence of, of having him there in the session. So it's always it's always a two-way street and it's a great way, I think, for ensembles to develop. So if you run an ensemble, please make sure you get out there and get commissioning because it's a, a fantastic thing thing to do for so many reasons. You know, if if there was one composer, I don't know, who if there was one composer from the past who you could meet, who would it be? I think probably for me it would either be J.S. Bach or William Byrd, both composers, of course, who we sing a lot in of music by in, in Vocher's Eight. And I know William Byrd is a particular favourite of Eleanor. I think one of my favourite memories from the session would be a lunch break in between recording at Chesterton. And they have a lot of gymnastics kit there and lying down on the big mattresses that were all lined up on top of one another, eating my lunch. That was, that was a pretty special moment amongst all the beautiful music that we were singing. I think my favourite EP would have to be Elemental. Uh, it includes Britain's Hymn to St Cecilia, which I thoroughly enjoyed recording, uh, and I think it's come out really well, I'm quite proud of it. And also Virtue by Jonathan, Jonathan Dove, um, who's our composer in residence, and I really enjoyed putting that one together. I think one of my favourite pieces of all of them is Nea Riscaris and Chivitas by William Byrd. We sing quite a lot of William Byrd in the group, he's one of my favourite composers. And I really enjoyed the sessions, we worked quite closely with Adrian at the time to really get the most out of the music.
So we've now had seven musical selections from seven members of Vocha's Eight, and I'll be completing the set shortly by letting you know what my selection will be. But before I do that, I want to let you know that creating a product like this really requires a lot of hard work from a lot of people, certainly more than just the eight of us in the group. And so I've got a few thank yous that I'd like to say. First of all, to our production team, Dave Heinet, our engineer, for all of his wonderful work in creating the sound that you hear on this CD. And to Adrian Peacock, who's our producer. Adrian's role is to sit there and make sure that we are hitting all of our artistic standards and help us to hit them through those gruelling sessions. So thank you very much to the two of you. We couldn't have done it without you. Also to Louise Hughes, who's been the creative director on this project. It was Louise's idea to use the After Silence title and to um, work with the Huxley quote. And she also took a lead on creating this beautiful booklet. So thank you, Louise, for everything you've done. And to my brother, Paul. Paul was a founder member of Vocha's 8. It's now the group's chief executive. And so, of course, he holds the purse strings, but is also a pillar when it comes to all things to do with the art and the singing as well. And to our management teams all around the world for all of your support in helping us get to this milestone of 15 years. Special thanks to Robin Tyson, our general manager. Robin himself, a very fine singer. He has a guiding hand on the business, of course, but also is very much represented in the artistic side too. And finally, last and by no means least, to you all, our audience, for your support over the past 15 years. If you're still sitting here listening to me today, then <laughs> a big pat on the back uh, to you all and a very big thank you. You know, a word that's come up a lot in the last two hours is the word collaboration. And everything we do, we like to do with other people, whether that's singing with each other, whether that's making music with other musicians or whether that's interacting with you, our community and we really appreciate the support that you give us in everything we do and please 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 you can support us in this project by going out and getting yourself one of these physical books so that you can really enjoy the project as we want you to with this beautiful booklet and all these notes and then there's of course also our live from London if you'd like to support us that way too we couldn't do it without you and we look forward to making music for you and with you whenever we can as we go forwards from here. Fitting then, I suppose, that my piece to close this stream today is also a collaboration, a wonderful collaboration with the Academy of Ancient Music, who've been great partners for us over the past few years. I always believe the last word should be left to J.S. Bach. So just before I introduce that, I'll let you know that I'm going to be back next week, next Friday, with a final preview show for our Live from London online festival. So please come and join me then. It's going to be a very exciting couple of months going forwards. Thank you for being here today. It's goodbye from me, and I'm going to hand over to J.S. Bach for Cantata 150, Nach der Herr verlanget mich. <laughs>
See you. 